there's something immediately striking about the isotope Hydrium Blue Knight. It's not the matte finish to the case, the super domed sapphire crystal, or the glossy black dial, all features which on other watches might be a standout feature. No, for me, it's the utter dedication to the Dark Knight aesthetic, which includes a pretty useless glossy black bezel insert. Let me explain. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a like if you like it. If you already have, thank you so much. Each and every one helps keep the channel going. Also a big shout out to Mark, who's lent in watches in the past and has lent this one in as well. Thank you so much Mark for the generosity and trust. So back to the watch in question, the Isotope Hydrium Blue Knight. They must have been worried about a court injunction or something for a Dark Knight reference. That would have been one hell of a collaboration. Anyway, first off, some specs. And this is not a small watch, despite what it may say on paper. It might be 40mm in diameter and have a somewhat standard 48mm lug to lug measurement, but it does wear larger. That could be because the manageable 12.9mm thickness of the case is thickened further still to a pretty chunky 14.9mm by the double dome sapphire crystal. And that is one hell of a dome. If this thing had come out in the year 2000, it'd be a conference centre by now. That's one for the Millennium Dome purists out there. Unfortunately, that's one of the things I'd change. More on that later though. The movement is one I've not come across before. It's a Landeron 24. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Landeron, Landeron? Either way, it's a clone of the ETA 2824, and it's running pretty well here. It's a 40 hour power reserve. It's got hacking, hand winding, all the usuals. It's a Swiss made movement, although there is some debate about that on Calibre Corner, which I'll leave a link to below if you're interested. But Isotope put Great Britain at 6 o'clock there, which is a nice little nod to their proud, albeit short, history. The finishing on the watch is refreshingly cool. It's sandblasted, which I know other micro brands have done before, but it's still so novel, and it also helpfully hides scratches better than brushed or polished steel does. There's this big submarine man on the case back, plus the spec list. But I can't help thinking that having Batman himself on there would be the ultimate ambassador for this piece. I see a lot of these big submarine men on these dive watches. I'm thinking in particular about Addy's dive watches. And like Addy's dive watches, I think that here it just makes it look a little bit cheap. But anyway, this is essentially a blackout watch. Yes, there is some loom, as you can see here. But really, this is stealth wealth with a capital S and a lowercase w. At £740, it's somewhat decent value, though I would like a bracelet option, but in essence it's all about having an almost Vanta Black negative space on the wrist. I say almost because the blued hands, when they catch the light, shimmer beautifully above that dial and really offset the almost entirely black look. Again, almost entirely black. On the glossy black bezel insert, there is a kind of blue loom pip, oh name, but you can't really see it with the naked eye. On the press pictures, you can see it on their website, for example, but I never really caught it. I didn't even realize it was there, in fact, until I did look on their website. It kind of renders the bezel insert, well, useless. I didn't use it for time in anything, and I might have liked to, because let's face it, I'm never gonna take this thing diving, despite the 300 meters of water resistance. So it just feels a little bit showy and maybe a bit of a gimmick. What isn't a gimmick is the Tropic style strap that it comes on. It's really supple and really comfortable and just really easy to wear. Plus there is some matching hardware here done in sandblasted steel as well, which is signed. A nice touch again. This is a watch that above all just looks cool. It's a piece that you'll want to tell people about and show off. But to me that's kind of all it is. It's a bit of showing off. It's a limited edition piece so you can't buy it now unfortunately. But even if I could, I wouldn't pick one up, I'm afraid. The Dome Sapphire Crystal, whilst being really cool, is just too domed for me. And thickening the watch's profile on the wrist feels like a compromise rather than an advantage. Ditto the lack of AR coating. Really, I could barely get a usable shot of this thing in natural daylight. It really is a flecto magnet. Honestly, I was tempted to put this thing on the wall and use it as a mirror at some points. That's a shame because with the right balance between lots of AR coating and an almost Vanta black dial, you could have something that appears to be a floating black hole on your wrist, a portal to another dimension. 
Sadly, this lives very much in our own dimension. And whilst this thing is built incredibly well, there is just something a bit gimmicky about it. Batman might wear a watch this thick, but he wouldn't knowing that its practicality for time and things was compromised by an invisible loom pip, nor would he appreciate that its reflective properties would likely alert nearby goons to his location. It feels like a near miss, and wholly opportunistic marketing Batman, it's a queen related Instagram post, the most frightening villain of all. Isotope, although a small and cool brand to follow on Instagram with some pretty boss photography, did get in on the whole monarchist thing, which I didn't really like. To each their own, etc. And I know, I know, who am I to talk about making watches political? But I'm not a brand. I don't really care about how Kit Kat are mourn in the passing of Elizabeth II. If you do, you're even Nicholas Witchell or some kind of Q enthusiast. But even if Isotope is a small independent brand whose owners and PR team are one and the same, I'm not sure I'm bothered that my watch is in a state of mourning any more than I care that my chocolate bar is. Either way, I now can't disassociate what felt like a gimmicky watch from that gimmicky marketing post. But that's not to say others can't, and more power to them. This is still a solid, well-built watch, but one which just isn't for me, mainly on the basis of practicality. No doubt there will be some that are annoyed by how I feel here, not least the brand, and some of those same people who tell me to keep politics out of my reviews will likely be the same ones telling me to let the royals into them. But it's just not for me, neither the watch nor that Instagram post. But if we all like the same things, the world would be a very boring place, wouldn't it? So let me know in the comments if you don't mind that this watch is impractical, or if you think I should be thrown in jail for treason. All views are welcome, except the ones I disagree with. Thanks again to Mark for letting me spend some time with this watch. Hit the subscribe button and join the revolution here. Thanks for watching, see you next time.